Hello and welcome back! In this series, I want to go through the entire Ilias campaign. I will not only explain the campaign quests and their meaning for the world of Atreya, but also tell you about all the important characters and their personal story. We will also include special places of interest that you always wondered about. And lastly, I will explain all the dungeons, their backstory, the reason we go and kill everything there, and how we follow up on our tasks after the dungeon. So lean back, relax, and let's start. In the last video, we hopped out at the Agairon village and heard the love story of a priestess and a leperist that found a tragic end. Today, we continue our journey in the Agairon village. We talk to an old lady named Hanet. She says that death will come for her soon, and she has one last wish before she returns to the Ether. She grew up with a boy named Denlavis. As children, they dreamed of ascending, of serving the light as partners. But while Denlavis ascended, Hanet did not. When he was first dispatched as a guardian, he wrote and visited Hanet whenever he could. But those stopped and Hanet hasn't heard of him since. She fears that Denlavis was sent to the abyss. Before she dies, she needs to discover his fate. That's why she asks for our help. As we accept to help her, she sends us to another deva named Forces that was posted to the same unit as Denlavis. Maybe she knows something. We talk to her and whilst she does remember Denlavis, she hasn't heard of him in a long time. But she sends us to another deva that was close to Denlavis, a deva named Alexis. Alexis tells us that he hasn't heard of Denlavis in a long time either. Rumors are that Denlavis crossed the rift with his unit, but he didn't come back. But another deva named Aaron, that wasn't a unit that supposedly crossed the rift, is nearby, so we should talk to him. And that is exactly what we do. And we finally get a real answer. Denlavis was a fine fighter, fierce as a naga, but he disappeared decades ago. We were in the bloody mist legion together. The lovers and I went with our unit through a rift to Asmodee. We found a place called Morheim and discovered the Fire Temple. A sanctuary filled with jewels and valuables as big as a mountain. A beautiful woman appeared, she nearly caught us. I don't know who she was, but I will never forget her. We grabbed some trinkets and then slipped away before she noticed us. Once we had made our escape, we realized that Enlavis wasn't with us. That was the last I saw him. I was transferred to the Golden Bow Legion soon after. Rumor was that Enlavis was killed by that woman. No one knows for sure though. With new information we return to Hanet and report for her. We tell her about the rumor that Enlavis has been killed by an Ismodian woman. He refuses to believe that. He can't be dead, she says. She's sure he must still be alive and asks and begs us to help her once more by going into the fire temple and search for clues of the lovers. We accept and make our way into the fire temple. We fight our way through the temple and arrive in a room that is filled with treasure and gold wherever we look. In this room is a man, and it is indeed the missing deva, the lovers. As we talk to him, he is surprised to see an Elias here and offers us help to escape this place. But that is not what we are here for, so we tell him that we came to search for him because Hanet has asked us to. He's shocked to hear Hanet's name. What? Hanet? You've seen her? I never expected to hear her name again. She must be very old by now. I'm surprised she still remembers me. I'm sorry that she still remembers me. She was my wife. We had a child. Stillborn. I ascended just afterward, and in my grief, I fled. I couldn't stand Hannah's sadness. When I came here, I was entranced by the Lady Crowmead, her passion, her riches, and I stayed. Here, take this necklace. It has Hannah's and my name on it. It will prove that you were here. Tell her to forget me, or better yet, tell her I'm dead. We leave the fire temple and return to Hanet. 
We tell her that Dinlavas is dead and that he stayed in the fire temple with an Asmodian woman named Chromid. Then we hand her the necklace. And he stayed for this Roman Chromid? Asmodian Succubus, faithless man. What a coward he was. Thank you for your help. Knowing the hard truth is better than knowing nothing at all. With this we leave Hanit in her sad thoughts and help out other villagers. However, some time after that Hanit approaches us again, but this time it is not sadness alone what she feels. She feels angry and wants revenge. Revenge on Chromeed. Then love has abandoned me for an Asmodian bed. He left me to grieve alone, unconsoled. Please go back to the fire temple and kill this woman Chromeed. Then I'll have the peace I desire. So once again we move into the fire temple, fight our way through monsters and arrive in front of the Asmodian woman, Chromeed. After the battle we return to Hanit and report of our success. She is very thankful that she can now live the rest of her days knowing that Chromeed is dead. As for the Lavis, we simply do not know what happened to him after our first conversation. We can't dwell on this much longer either because Eltnan is once again in a lot of trouble. We are called to the Eltnan observatory to help out, but we will do that the next time. So have a nice day and hopefully see you in the next one. Bye.